right. All right. Poets. It's been a while. How y'all doing, man? My name's Nate Jackson. This is Caveman Poet Society. <laughs> I'm here with Evan Britton. What's up, dog? Hey, brother. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. It's been too long. Too long. We've been in some uh, studio transition. The holidays, you know. You guys are getting married and honeymooning. Yeah, man. Yeah. We've had some uh, some uh, some big life moments for two out of three members of the pod. That's Jed. Hey, Jed. How are you? I also got married. Yeah, you did. Yeah. How is it? It's awesome. How's the married life? Married life is great. Yeah. You went to Bora Bora for your uh, honeymoon. Which was amazing. Mm-hmm. I went to Marrakesh. Which was also amazing. L- Very different. different. Yeah. yeah, a little yeah. bit. No I love be- that. No beaches. Uh, but, but like an Indiana Jones adventure. It was, man. It was, it was very intense. The food, <laughs> well, food was super good. Um, the culture was very interesting. Um, it's an Arab country, so there's mosques everywhere. And in that, that area, like the mosques are the tallest buildings. You don't have skyscrapers or anything, so you can see the mosques from wherever. But it was also colonized by the French, so it was a, a decidedly French and Western feel to, uh, to everything. Everyone spoke a, a, an element of English. And it's in Africa? It is, yeah. Northwest? Northwest Africa. Corner? Yeah. Bora wow. Bora, also settled by the French. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. So we got that in common. We both went to France. Colonies. <laughs> yeah, that's I right. I love that. But we've got caveman poet shit to talk about. Fuck yeah! And uh, there's been a lot going on in the in the last couple of months. We're football players, and we thought today we would talk uh, at the beginning about uh, an issue that's near and dear to us, and for many of you out there as well. Not just football players; every single human being uh, faces the possibility of having a head injury in his or her life. A lot of us are dealing with head trauma, brain trauma. And so recently, uh, in the last, I don't know, 10 years or whenever that was discovered, a disease called CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, was found in former football players. Everyone mm. knows about CTE. It's a big problem. We talk about cannabis a lot as a solution to that. But, but there's a guy named Merrill Hodge, who was a Pittsburgh Steelers running back in the 90s, who, uh, who wrote a book called Brainwashed. And it's about, he's a CTE truther. And it's about (laughs) CTE science being overblown and uh, political. And he thinks there's a war on football. And so he wrote a book attacking the CTE science and declaring, uh, alas, that football is safe for kids. He's a huge (laughs) youth football advocate. and uh, Head of USA football. Head of USA football. Um which but, is the NFL's youth football organization. Right. And we're going to fuck this guy up in our... Book club! <laughs> and he, in, I think it was 1994, he was 29 years old. He got hit in a game, uh, got a concussion in a game, went into cardiac arrest, <laughs> spent two days in intensive care, had to retire from the NFL... Wow. Uh, and then running back? He was a running back for the Steelers, yeah. And then he sued. Um, well, he, no, he was playing for the Bears when this happened. He started okay. with the Steelers and he, he played with the Bears. And then he ended up suing the Bears team doctors for mishandling his concussion. <sighs> was awarded $1.5 million, collected 500 k of that. In a settlement? Right. And in the book, he says, I didn't do it for the money, I did it for the truth. Oh, right. To push the ball forward. Good. To hold these guys accountable to it's mismanaging my concussion. You know? Interesting. So yeah. he believes in the concussion. Yeah, he okay. believes that concussions are a problem and that okay. CTE does exist, but C- it's T- overblown. And CTE is not in direct correlation to football or otherwise. Football does not directly de- cause CTE. Correct. Actually, one of his points in the in the book was the average G force uh, created by a vigorous pillow fight <laughs> is twenty Gs. Now, should we ban pillow fights, dude? What? I mean, what <laughs> wait, well, what generates twenty Gs? Is he t- is the pillow or the f- <laughs> getting hit in the head? Yeah, who the fuck did that study? Yeah, he, also. <laughs> well, this book is full of of kind of cherry picking weird scientific data to support his claim. 
you know, and he teams up with a, a neurologist, a scientist to write this book, a guy named Dr. Peter, Peter Cummings, who wrote an op-ed in Yahoo called, I'm a neurologist and I let my son play f- football. And so Merrill Hodge read this and said, hey, that's my man. This guy, Peter Cummings, works at Boston University, the same place mm. where Ann McKee and all them work, but he works in a different department and they don't really respect his opinion. And so he's got a bone to pick with that whole staff, mm. it, it, particularly Ann McKee, who's like, you know. Who headed up the study that came out about a year or last April or maybe even earlier than that that said that was the thing, 110 out of 111 NFL brains tested and autopsy tested positive for CTE. Right. Um, he has a legitimate gripe about the way that that story was reported by the New York Times because every one of those brains that was sent in t- to be studied, the person who died was exhibiting symptoms. He was thought to have had it, essentially. And so the sample you're taking is guys who probably had it anyway. And so it didn't necessarily reflect what might have been a more accurate percentage if you include guys who weren't symptomatic who also died. Right. There was no control group is what he's complaining about. Correct. And the New York Times didn't really say that. You know, and the New York Times... That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And the New York Times sometimes sensationalizes shit. We know that. Yeah. But part of the book was kind of like, you know, the failing New York Times. (laughs) Fake news. It's fake news. It was Trumpian. Yeah, it was very Trumpian. Yeah. You could almost, you know, hear him shouting, make America great again. Make football yeah, yeah. great again. Yeah. Um, so he had a legitimate gripe on that one. Um, well, this guy also, I read this Dr. Peter Cummings is a specialist in like zombie studies or something. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I don't, I don't know, know if that is a sort of non-scientific layman's term for a type of neurology, but... Is Kyle out there? No, no, no. I was just looking at the timer. I didn't oh, nice, see, yeah, nice. Somebody okay. just started it. Thanks, oh, Jen. Nice job, Jen. That's what we're um, here for. Fucking A, bro. We miss Gandhi here. Yeah. yeah. We're in transish. We're in a new studio. Yeah. I mean, we're at the T Ranch right now. God bless them, but it ain't it ain't the old home HQ with Gandalf at her feet. <laughs> right. Um, I think it's really Gandalf. It's the missing. Gandhi. Missing yeah, we miss him. Um, but so... You know, this is just a really fascinating idea that this guy came out with this book. He's an ESPN analyst. He's a guy who played the game, who suffered a super traumatic brain injury. Yeah. That caused him cardiac arrest. Yeah. Sued the team he was playing for for mishandling that ordeal. Won money. Is the head of USA football. His son plays the game. He was... You said he he helped coach his son's team. Well, yeah, dude, like... In the early 2000s, I guess it was, his son was seven, and he uh, wanted his son to play football. He said, well, he's, in the book, he's like, his son said, Daddy, I want to play football like you. He's like, well, then it's ordained by God, then we're going to make it happen. I don't know. He's not from the South, actually. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, his, I like it. his son, Bo, is seven years old, and so he takes him to the, to the Pop Warner team, but it's only for eight-year-olds. And so the coach is like, hey, he's too young. He's like, but Merrill's like, well, he's ready. And the coach He's is ready. like, yeah, the coach is like, well, the only way I'll let him play is if you help coach. And so Merrill agreed. He came on as a coach and within a week or two, he got into a, a philosophical uh, argument with a head coach about offensive strategy. Merrill Hodge <laughs> wanted to throw the rock. He yeah. wanted to develop a pro style downfield out. passing game. Yeah. And so he was using With the practice time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he was using practice time to to run routes and do passing drills. And the coach was like, We don't do that. Yeah. What the fuck? And he's like, Well, you should. And the way Hodge tells the story is that dispute basically got him fired. So he left there, he took Bo, and he started his own team. Mm. And that kind of started Merrill's whole thing of like, I know the right way. And, right. and if you do it my way, you'll be you'll be good. Right. You'll be protected. You'll be safe. I can spot a concussion before it happens. We have a very strict concussion policy on our team. All the kids know it. It's not about being a tough guy. It's about being smart. Right. He can spot concussions. Yeah. He's the he's, he's the concussion whisperer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the top yeah. cruise of concussions. He's, yeah. Exactly. He can leap. Uh, TBIs in a single bound or tall TBIs on tangle tau tangled proteins. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, so he claims in the book 
essentially that these numbers, these CTE figures are blown out of proportion. Correct. That there's way fewer guys struggling in life after football than you would be led to believe. Yeah. Um, and then B, that uh, the guys who are suffering from CTE and dementia, it's because you're a drug addict, you're an alcoholic, you haven't been able to reinvent yourself. Right. You are a, you know, low life, you know, degenerate. Right. Infinite biomarkers contribute to it in his in his mind. Obesity as well, poor diet, which I actually agree For with. For sure. I agree with. I agree with. I, I, can't, I mean, a part of me agrees with a lot of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, and in addition to that, so one, one, one part of the, the book that was interesting is, is he was, when he was forced into retirement, and he had this gnarly brain injury. He actually would take a sip. He took a sip of wine and went blind. For like two minutes or something like that. I mean, imagine the wreckage in that brain. Right. And then he said he was like, for a couple of years, was just real depressed and in a dark place. But then he got this job at ESPN and learning these new skills at ESPN and being forced to kind of learn these new skill sets healed his brain. And I do agree with yeah, him. We've to talked an extent. about that. Exactly. You've, you've talked about that. Yeah. You got to stimulate your brain. Yeah. You know, you got to learn new shit, learn new skills. For me, it was guitar and writing, you know, yeah. for everybody's different. Um, but so obesity, which I agree with because actually, no doubt. you know, we talk about the guys, the linemen who are the ones who have CTE the most. Well, they're also the biggest, the heaviest. Yeah. And so that could be a problem. Yeah. Um, and you see the linemen who are really doing well in life after football are the guys who lose a ton of weight after. Right. You know? Yeah. And that starts that whole process of learning new skills and behaviors and living a totally different lifestyle. Yeah. You know, changing your body in that way. Right. And these are these are things that nobody really knows, man. We don't really get told any of this stuff when we play. Yeah. And so it's for, for Merrill Hodge, like he has a lot of really good nuggets in this book about how to keep your brain. Basically, it's the state of your brain that's going to determine whether or not the CTE takes root. Yeah. So if you are if you have a healthy brain otherwise, his argument is then football hits are not going to trouble you. Right. And if it's a concussion, you wait until you heal again, and then you come back as long as you treat it the right way. But you remember what it's like to be in the NFL. You're drinking, yeah. You're popping pills, yep. you're eating whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Uh you're, you're not doing... you're not challenging your brain at all. <laughs> At all. You're not speaking. Oh. You're never coming up with one sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. You know? And so all the conditions are there to make CTE take root. Yeah. So he's he's talking about this ideal, perfect, untouched snowfall scenario of the most perfect brain. And if that exists, then maybe CTE won't happen. Yeah. I mean, everything that he's talking about uh, is, it's like football puts every guy in this container and it takes luck and a massive influence of will to break yourself out of, really. Because you see the guys who are just devastated in football, in life after football. Yeah. You know, the guys who just can't figure out what's next or why didn't my football career go the way I dreamed it should have. Yeah. You know, who aren't willing to go get out there and do something new or fucking start your life over. Yeah. You know? It's hard not to feel that. It's really t- It's hard, man. I don't think there's one guy who doesn't feel that to some extent. You f- I, both of us, I know, I know I have felt that many days. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, Jesus Christ, where the fuck is my life? You know, what happened to it? How did I get here? You know, what am I going to do with myself? How am I going to make money? You know, yeah. how am I, am I worth anything now? Right. You know, that I'm done, that I'm not the big superhero playing on Sundays in the stadium. And now I'm watching guys on TV and I'm getting fucking pissed off about it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the hard parts is the is the saturation of the NFL in our culture. Yeah. And the fact that we can't really escape it. Yeah. Not if we wanted to. And... We actually have a lot of knowledge and skill in this thing, and so we're naturally pulled into it. Maybe it's not into coaching or being an analyst, but on the periphery somehow, like we're doing with cannabis, we're still 
tapping our experience in the NFL. Yeah. We know what that means, and we know how to do that thing. And the goal becomes how do you learn a new thing that you can attack with the same vigor and confidence and sense of, like, purpose? Yeah. You know? And that's a hard thing to find. Well, I think Merrill probably lucked the fuck out when he became an ES when he got his job at ESPN. Yeah. You know. 100%. You get plugged into a situation, like you said, and like he talks about, where you've got to learn a whole new language. You've got to learn how to, you know, live a new life. Yeah. And, I mean, that's super powerful. That right there, put everything else aside, I think is probably the number one thing to help guys out of that situation. Yeah. But then, you know, you've got guys like Mike Adamley, who I don't know if you know what's going on with him, but he's in fucking horrendous shape. I don't know. know? I don't know him. He's got, they've talked about, he's, you know, he was a long time, he became announcer. Mm -hmm. He was a commentator. He did also, I think he did, um, what was that show, uh, Ultimate? No, uh, Gladiator. Oh, American Gladiator. American Gladiator. Gladiator. Wow. He did that. Saber and freaking, they had all kinds of weird names. <laughs> Malibu. <laughs> Laser. Yeah. yeah. Turbo. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, The uh, Rock's doing his version of it now. I know, Titan Games. But then Kevin Hart did his version of it, too. It's, everybody's doing a version of it. Yeah, man. Dude. Everybody's <laughs> doing a version of everything. We do the Caveman Poet Games. But, man, I mean, you know, I think that, is a huge part of it, but you actually in your op ed you talk about cannabis. I do, man. Yeah, does because he does in the book as well. He does. He does a mention, right? He mentions it, but he doesn't. There's no comments on it at all. It's tucked at the very end, and it's a couple of bullet points when discussing three options that Doctor Maroon had given as some kind of cutting edge herbal treatment. Mm. And so these three bullets are all herbal. You know, mm. fish oil kind of stuff as well. And one of them was CBD. He said he was something like, you know, studies on the cutting edge of 2018 suggesting CBD is like really uh, huge with all ne- all neurological problems. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Does he ever talk about the science that says how the body will heal this damage? Does he ever get into that, or is well, he yeah, just like, yeah, absolutely? Okay. So it's it's based on inflammation. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Okay. Like, like a lot of stuff in the body is yeah. as well. And so it's based on inflammation of the brain. And so what happens when you don't treat a brain injury correctly, it, it, the inflammation starts to kind of uh, take over and it, and it never, I don't know, it, it never, uh, it never anti inflames. <laughs> right, right. You start. You never. And that's how the tau proteins kind of out. take root. Yeah. You know, and that's how the tangles set in. In these inflamed environments. Yeah. yeah. And so actually, this is how Craig Matamo described it, is wrapping a wire around the end of your finger. Right, right, right. And if you leave you it there. cut off the blood supply. Yeah. yeah. And so the weed, I guess, probably unwraps all those little yeah. wires yeah, yeah. all around the brain and keeps things flowing. Yeah. I believe that. Well, he, I mean, doctor, uh, well, he's not a doctor, right? Dr. Cummings? Craig. Craig. Oh, Craig. No, he's not. No, he's not. I mean, he, but he's, hits, yeah. he really hit on that on that point too you know it's a uh, these concussions are almost like a spiritual a psycho spiritual disorder as well right where it's like a devitalization of the organism which totally makes sense i mean if you're in a fucking that type of collision and you know that's going to have repercussions you know yeah because that rattles your whole system right you know, your nervous system and your neurological system, it all gets thrown out of alignment. So how the fuck can you be expected to heal if you don't understand what's happening there? Right. You know, and, and the, I think as football players, I never really thought about that. That's the thing I was going to say. As football players, we don't know any of that shit. You're like, I'm just going to go fucking you're keep like, going. You're like, what? I'm trying to memorize what I, this playbook, actually, <laughs> yeah. which is very dense and dense. difficult in itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like double wing right, fucking. If I'm the if I'm the zebra and we have counter motion, I'm looking to see if they go with me and uh, right. You know, so it's, I know if it's man or zone. zone, right? And then and then if, there's just infinite things these guys are asked to memorize, and so no one's introducing them to the ideas about their own physical health. Do you think memorization does not stimulate you? It's just so it's just rote. You know, you know, you're just memorizing. It doesn't yeah, give there's you that. something. I think there's something different about that. Yeah, 
Agreed. Especially when it's you're constantly doing the same thing over and over again, That's year after year. Yeah. You know, you're always just rememorizing the plays. Yeah. I don't know about you, but our coaches, every week we'd install the new package yeah. and they'd reinstall every play that was o- yeah. that overlapped from the previous yeah. week. And 80% of them were the same plays. Yeah. So we have to reinstall the same shit we did every single week week based on the defensive front that you're going to be seeing that right. week what type of little iterations sort of happen on this play yeah you know these guys like to keep this linebacker back so uh, this week instead of you you know punching that defensive end and working up to that guy you're just going to sit on the defensive end in this one <laughs> right on the back side right you and, know and that stuff they all decided up in the coaches' offices in the last few days before you arrived. And so you as a player, there's none of that conception involved in your process. You're not thinking about how to beat them. Right. You're just doing what they told you is going to beat them. Right. And so, like, you're the best player in the fucking world. You're the virtuoso. You're fucking yeah, Beethoven. you're the master. And the Sunday school piano teacher is giving you the sheet music, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, you guys are doing passive learning, yeah. and it's just like it's not giving you the, the juice you're talking about. But this it guy, the brain good. his ego is fucking as big as the room. Yeah. This coach. Yeah. And you as the player are functioning under this orchestrated situation that you find yourself in. Yeah. I am the player. Right. I do what the coach says. Right. You know. Otherwise I don't get to play. And that's sort of that's And the model doesn't change between an eight year old kid no. and a thirty year old man. Yeah. A it's grown exactly man. the same. Yeah. A guy on his first day and a guy on his last day. Yeah. And so no wonder, man, the guy's not gonna know what to do out in the real world. Yeah. Do you think guys wanted? I mean, do you think as a player you wanted to know like how fuck how much you were getting fucked up? I mean, you you know, you know that the pills aren't good for you. Yeah. You know, you know that you know you're partying way too much. You know, but it's like I'm a warrior. You don't feel yeah. that though. You don't feel yeah. it. Uh, you don't feel that it's detrimental to you. Yeah, like, I don't. Dude, fe- I didn't. Right. Any young man is in the same boat where it's like I don't care about credit card debt right now. It's all the same shit. You're like I, I I'm just trying to go. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've got I've got a, my eye on something and I'm gonna get there. Yeah. I mean, you're in the NFL, man. You got a 24 hour round the clock boner. <laughs> Pretty much, man. No just doubt. Like, bro. No doubt. You going to work? It's just like fucking testosterone from yeah. the trough you know no doubt <clears throat> and so man i mean it's it's not surprising that when you leave you're completely alone you're completely in the dark yeah but i would have liked to know you know someone to encourage me someone within the organization or someone attached to the game to develop other skills yeah while i was playing football and i believe that the union needs to go after that harder and carve in hours of the day. Every single fucking day from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. should be like career studies. Yeah. Every day, dude, like school. Like they <sighs> to learn a different language. To, I and, love that idea. And they man. get to choose a couple of majors or whatever it yeah. fucking is, you yeah. know? Do you really need... Cut 20 minutes out of practice. <laughs> cut 30 minutes of meetings. Or just cut the two hours of meetings that you do from right, 8 right. to 10. Yeah. Because we would do... Three hours of meetings in the morning and fucking another hour and a half after practice. Yeah. That's too much. I mean, that's, that's like being in a cult, though. It's like we can't talk about the outside world. Yeah. That's as an outside observer, yeah, that's what I see. I mean, you're I'm totally like, right. No, bro. they don't want to do that because then your mind is off. It gives you ideas right. about other things. Yeah. yeah. It does. But <laughs> they the, don't if want the you union, thinking about that. They yeah. don't. But if the union digs in their heels with some scientific data about the brain health and what's going to actually help their brain, then you got, you got a chance. Well, there's this really, I had an interesting conversation too on this point with this guy, Ruben Lindo, who we met in Vegas. Yeah. You remember him? Yeah. Uh, he played for the Jets for a little while. I think maybe some other teams. It was a DB. Now he's in the cannabis industry. He has a business. Um, and he was telling me that before, like two CBA, two collective bargaining agreements ago, there, or forever, until up until recently, there's been this rule that players are not allowed to discuss or present their businesses mm-hmm. to other players or to the team or within the league. 
So you can't use the NFL. You're this massive network of, you know, really high paid young individuals and then coaches and then, you know, high profile sports executives. You can't use that network to promote your business if you had an off the field business. Isn't that fucking interesting? And he said recently, I guess they've allowed guys to start doing that. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but well, they, they still that, yeah. they find you if you wear a different brand like a, a Reebok when your team's sponsored by Nike. Yeah, like they're yeah. It's crazy though. Ultra that's, paranoid. Yeah, that's just like another way to control it. You yeah. know, to keep it keep you isolated and keep you like at an arm's length distance. You know, it's fucking crazy, man. You know, the more you understand, and it's just like, of course, of course they want that. Yeah, I mean, as a business, you understand, like, they don't want you promoting a different business right? In yeah, in theirs, but it's just all, it takes over every part of your life as a player, and so, yeah, like, anything could be considered you being, I mean, if someone interviewed you out in the street, and you're on an NFL team, but you're talking about your own business, and it's a separate interview, but they put that on TV, right? then the NFL might not like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it everything gets that pulled would be into amazing your, though. Yeah, to have some high profile player like I don't know who I like right now, like Alvin Kamara. Yeah, talking about like his clothing line <laughs> in an interview rather than talking about football. That would be great. That would be fucking amazing. That's but they then he would be he would be smacked. Oh yeah, with so many fines, a suspension, some sort of fucking disciplinary action from his team and the league. Yeah, that's why the unions, man, they gotta get they gotta get tough in negotiating and really start to carve out some at least start to get a foothold on these ideas that they need to like make these people more well rounded. Yeah. Or protect them. I'm gonna round out this segment. We'll be right back. <laughs> I've been thinking of the difference between water and the waves on it. Rising, water's still water, falling back. It is water. Will you give me a hint how to tell them apart? Because someone has made up the word wave. Do I have to distinguish it from water? There is a secret one inside us. The planets and all the galaxies pass through his hands like beads. That is a string of beads we should look at with luminous eyes. And welcome back to the Caveman Poet Society. Hey, Carl Turley. Come on the <laughs> mic, brother. What's going Get on? in here, man. You you can, can, live? Yeah. 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 You yeah, should grab recording. your mic for yeah. a minute. Down? Sure. Why not, What's up, brother? How are you? Look at Sharp. <laughs> Hey, it's a business meeting day. Hell yeah, bro. One of our all-time favorites. Mic? Yeah, you can just bring it down. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, well, we talked about Merrill Hodge's book. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wish you were in here for that. And well, you can uh, talk about it all over again. <laughs> I'd love to talk about Brainwashed. Yeah. <laughs> Did you read it? I'm not reading that trash. But you should read it just so you can like, see that side because it's like- I watched all his videos. Yeah. He's a fucking asshole. Yeah. I called him out online about it, and then he even ramps it up even more. And to the extent now he's talking about, well, this this uh, uh, hockey player, six doctors said he didn't have CT. Right. But Ann McKee and Dog, Bob Cantu and all these people said he did yeah. when they discovered it for yeah. real. And they showed it to everybody. Right. And Merrill Hodge is out there now saying that he didn't have CT. He was a fucking enforcer. Yeah. My wife was at Wade Belak's house the night before he left Nashville and killed himself in a hotel room in Toronto, another enforcer. And it is a line that is very clear in hockey of who these guys are that are committing suicide, mm. the enforcers, period. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, Merrill Hodge is out there talking about, oh, the, there was no CTE found. Yeah. And a, you're just disgracing dead people. You're fucking with dead people's families. He like, does that all in the book. Oh, he does that God. about, he I does, know. He I does it videos. like, like college kids who kill themselves. <laughs> like, yeah. he questioned that. He's like, S sorry, ma'am, your son did not die from football hits. He was a drug addict type yeah. of thing. Yeah. And uh, 
so Unreal. much of the book was about <laughs> smearing Boston University. So his argument is that Anne McKee, that's all political. Mm-hmm. You know, they're getting all the donor money and they're kind of hiding their findings. They're not sharing it with the scientific world. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know. It's a war on He football. also says that uh, stage one CTE is not actually CTE. <laughs> Stage one, like you're like what stage? Like at the end of the day, it's Alzheimer's. Okay, you can call it dementia pugilistica. You can call it CTE. You can call it dementia. You can call it whatever you want. At the end of the day, it's all Alzheimer's. Tau protein buildup leads to Alzheimer's disease. These are just stages of progression mm. of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, they've recognized it even in children. Where so they, CTE is pretty much akin to Alzheimer's. One hundred percent. It's the the progression of tau protein in the, in your brain. Brain, and that is a Does it progressive look disease at all. Like it'll be in different areas. It may look different. Ultimately, at the end of the day, down the road, it will lead to Alzheimer's. That's that's the end game of it all. So you can call it what you want it. At the end of the day, it's Alzheimer's disease, and we need to acknowledge it. You know, the, the country's not acknowledging our problem with Alzheimer's disease yet. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people are dying from Alzheimer's disease every year, <laughs> and it's in. in Many politician has said that Alzheimer's disease will bankrupt America. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Alzheimer's That's disease interesting. alone. Yeah. <sighs> it's costing the country billions of dollars, trillions. It's going to be here soon, and it will bankrupt America. Our mental health situation is, needs an answer, and cannabis is it. That's why we're here. That's why we yeah. talk about this. This is the only neuroprotective patented <laughs> substance in the world. They have right. discovered nothing else. That's well, crazy, Hodge, Hodge, to his credit, mentions CBD in his book. Really? At the very end. <laughs> and it's from the words of Dr. Maroon. Apparently, you know Dr. Maroon. Yeah. I guess he's on to CBD now, or at least he, he's familiar with the studies. Yeah. And uh, so he mentions that as a possible a possible. Uh, a possible cure. what? A cure he doesn't to what? say shit. A cure to nothing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a cure, what's no, he saying? No, his argument is that CTE <laughs> exists, but there are infinite yeah. biomarkers that contribute to it, and you can't say it's uh, caused by football. Yes, you can. And that's the science behind that and why it was <laughs> such a big deal. <laughs> because you we can. We got to have both you of directly, them on the pod. Dude, you can oh directly link this to football. You can, and it's not just football. This is head injuries, okay? You can yeah. directly link this to, to head injuries. So mm. we can take Merrill Hodge's argument and say, this is not just football. Okay, well, uh, let's go back and find out what it was from. What was it from? A head injury, period. Right. Right. Where'd you get that? Okay, so right. where'd you get that? It's an inherency in football. That's the point of it all. And that well, he's, saying with proper, he's saying with a proper technique, with a proper <laughs> medical apparatus, <laughs> spotting the concussion, you pull them out. Right. Th- yeah. It doesn't get worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's the argument. Uh, unbelievably <laughs> offensive to the science that's been right. <laughs> unbelievably discovered. Yeah. You know, I mean, th- th- you're just denying uh, factual evidence here that 96% of NFL players' brains that have been uh, uh, autopsied have this disease. The others, uh, I'm you know, curious to find out w- what those look like and uh, where they didn't have CT, but they're now relating every one of these other diseases as well. Um, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, yeah, ALS, ALS, yeah, to uh, the development of tau protein, the back of the brain stem that seeps into the spinal column, creating ALS symptoms. They tried to deny my friend, who I and Merrill Hodge, fuck him because uh, <laughs> this is my. I mean, he knows uh, uh, the dude from the Saints. Unbelievable, yeah. Well, yeah. there's Steve Gleason, yeah, um, and then uh, uh, Mike uh, Webster, uh, Kevin. Um, um, Dang it, man. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> oh, the guy who played for the, the Eagles. The Patriots and the Eagles. Um, the fullback. Yes. Oh, God. See, I this brain disease, I get frustrated and I forget like my good friend's names who I helped hold their fucking pants for them while they're taking a piss in the Kevin bathroom. Kevin Turner? Is Kevin that? Turner. Jeez. Yes, that's So him. close to my name. And Kevin and I were in Nashville together and I had to sit there and hold his pants for him while he had to take a piss in the bathroom, you know? Um, my grandfather died of ALS and this was linked directly back to a story that my dad told me that he got covered in a field. He was a soil tester by a crop duster. And, uh, so it's a neurological disorder that was caused because of these pesticides. 
uh, European soccer players are saying the head injuries, yes. Pesticides are another. So you, Merrill Hodge is just grasping at straws here uh, on an inherency that's in our sport. And then there are so many other factors saying that sports in general are causing these diseases with all these pesticides that are on all these fields mm-hmm. uh, that these kids are playing on and all these synthetic fields. And now the rubber are, fields. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And what diseases those are going to lead Cancer to. Cancer because shit. Exactly. They're talking about huge levels of, of all kinds of stuff coming off yeah. of these fields, especially when they get heated up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they used to say that those uh, fields heat up five degrees more than the grass field right next to it. If it's 95 degrees out, the, the rubber field is going to be 100 degrees. Oh, yeah. And it would burn through your cleats. More than that. Yeah. yeah it burns your cleats off. Yeah. Literally melts your cleats. <laughs> yeah. So that's coming up yeah. through your skin. Yeah. And uh, I heard that goalkeepers uh, that have been playing yes. soccer on that mm-hmm. stuff. Diving. Diving, getting it kicked up. Yeah. I mean, when you take a spill on one of those... After a game, I'd be pulling off my stuff, and yeah. I'd have them in my dick hole. Yeah, <laughs> all like, over how the you. the fuck did that get in there, you know? Yeah, dude. It gets in there. I'll yes. let you guys know how, that, how I turn out. I played a lot of goalie on those fields. Oh, did you? Yeah, for like seven years. Oh, yeah, yeah, years. yeah. In the, uh, and they Santa switched, Monica Night League. Yeah, they switched it to chalk. Like a chalk. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I, I had that rubber all over you. Yeah. And it just it smelled. Yeah. It was hot. It, yeah, it got really stinky. Yeah, because I think stuff just gets in there and lives, like bacteria, Ugh. and just hangs For out. Sure. Yeah, does there a drain? Yeah, there, there has to be a drain. There's a little there, bit, but, but it does, it's rubber. It's like it's tires. Yeah, yeah it's, it's tires. It's gonna like <laughs> seal up. It's gonna hold water. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. And so, they could uh, use sand, but they use rubber. You know, they're gonna run into a whole other thing with that, but. You know, yeah. you're, again, these are things that are inherent in football and sports. Right, these, right. The grass, the pesticides. They used to paint our fields. Did they do that for you guys with yeah. the green yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that? Yeah. yeah. What was that stuff? It made the yeah. grass green when it right. was brown. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. That's dude. for the TV. Yeah. We're falling down on that every day. Right, yeah. You know, it's getting into our mouths. Digging you know? right into yeah, wounds. Digging into wounds. All that shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, the staph infections that came out of AstroTurf oh and how God. filthy that was. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Unreal. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. Uh, no, yeah. No, uh, I'm very disappointed in Merrill Hodge. Uh, I've been very irate about that over the last couple of weeks when yeah. I found out about his book tour and everything. Oh, yeah, he's pumping I it, I mean, man. the reality of science, you know, again, we, get, we must listen to science. And the reality <laughs> of science is, is says otherwise. The laws of motion say otherwise. Right. And <laughs> statistics unbelievably say otherwise. You know, in youth football, you have 10 to 20 kids that die every year. You have 10 to 20 kids in uh, uh, severe spinal situations that are placed in wheelchairs for the rest of their life. Um, you know, these are real statistics that happen. They happen this year. There's 18 kids that got killed playing football this year. Uh, including the one kid that jumped out of a 16-story dorm room Um, and not including uh, an ex-high school football player that killed himself who was said to have had multiple concussions, all these other things, and other kids that have killed themselves. So from these young ages to these old players like Merrill Hodge's good friend, Junior Seau, you know, and all these other guys that he's totally... Mike Webster. Unbelievable that this guy has turned his back on these people who've, you know, gone through so much and all his friends that have been lost to just discredit that this disease isn't what they say it is when it clearly is. In science, you uh, or Western medicine, not science, because Western medicine isn't science at all. It, it's it it is just crazy chemistry. It's just all it is is chemistry. People figuring out ways to uh, talk about a disease or this or that. It's just theory, right? It's all theory. There's no science to it. Science is data. Science is proof. And all of the things that Omalo sh- showed, uh, Cantu, Amaki, every one of them, uh, they're all consistent. Everything that they showed was consistent, um, including 96% of NFL brains, you know, uh, dissected. Uh, I've been a part of these studies. There's a study right now that shows CTE in a living brain. Uh, and again, you, you is that is that has that been confirmed as like a, a good valid test that no, because us- it doesn't have FDA approval of 10 years of right. study. But in your opinion, is it a legit <laughs> test? 100. percent They know they can see it very clearly. You can see this on a basic MRI scan. If you guys got your brain MRI'd right now, you're going to have a blurred mass in your brain. You're going to have a something that the doctors come back to you and go. We need to talk to you about this. What is this here? 
Uh, and I've got pictures in my brain from when I had a seizure and I was hospitalized for three days in Nashville after my career was over um, because I kept having vertigo constantly during my career. Then after my career kept escalating even more. So I was having vertigo constantly, migraine headaches constantly, almost every day dealing with vertigo and learning how to different ways to combat vertigo, unbelievably <laughs> disabling uh, on top of all the other CT shit that I don't experience now that I've had more control over my brain mm -hmm. through cannabis. But the, the, the disruption that was there unbelievably and is still there uh, is because of this disease. It's not going away. So you don't think don't, the cannabis can heal it? I think it can. What the science says, it can stop the progression, but it can't reverse it. I don't know. You know, that's to be told. Well, you said you we feel do too much damage to right. our bodies otherwise, you know. But you feel good. I feel good, man. I feel better than I have in years. Yeah. You look good. Yeah. yeah. And so do you think. Energy's good. And so do you think your brain <laughs> might be healing? In ways, yes. But it's only through. Or maybe it's cannabis. connecting, creating the new pathways for you to take advantage of. That's where I think cannabis comes in. Right. I mean, they say we only use what percentage of our exactly. brains? 10%. Eight, nine, whatever. Maybe we killed, you know, 20%, but now we're just going to use a different 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and that's what speaks to cannabis. It opens up other neural pathways of the brain. Right. And we have so many more. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, also, and it helps the others. Also, know? and one of the arguments Merrill Hodge makes in the book, he makes some good points. And one of them is that it helps to, uh, to learn a new skill to help heal your brain. Um, do you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, the whole theory again of let just get a job. Let's money. Let's throw yeah, money yeah. at this. No, not money necessarily, but yeah. learning a new skill. Maybe maybe it's for me. It was learning guitar. Oh, gotcha. You know, uh, writing. You know, yeah, thinking. Taking a new up thing. your time, doing menial tasks, um, <laughs> which is what you do with Alzheimer's patients. Yes, that helps. No, but I mean, like, okay. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. As a former player yeah. who's trying to move on with his life, aside from brain injuries, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole thing of feeling lost, not knowing what your purpose is, because you don't have any other skills. This is something we were talking about earlier. We didn't really learn how to articulate our ideas when we played in the NFL. Yeah. We didn't learn how to come up with ideas and, and talk about our own beliefs or even formulate ways to communicate plans. And so learning that, how to do that outside of the NFL help me like neurologically feel more stable you know um do you think that there's any validation to that i i think having a direction and a focus in your life of course it helps you with your day it helps you when you wake up knowing what to do it helps that's why football you you have the these football the only guys i know that have ever gone back to coach football are the craziest guys because <laughs> they have to have it yeah yeah because if they don't they're a train wreck outside of the uh, the football but they can literally walk into the facility and now time warp i'm back in it yeah uh, bill romanowski talked about it in his book um which talked about the intention he had every game to go give himself a concussion on the first series of every game Jesus. so that because he, he knew Christ. because he knew he'd go into robot mode wow romo robot mode mm -hmm. and Whoa. he knew that romo robot mode he's been doing this forever and it's just going to take over and he's not have to think He's not going to have to worry. He's going to know what to do. He's going to watch the game the next day, not remember much of it. But no, he, he knows what that wow. result is. He did it for so long. And, and in cognitive issues, if you give someone a purpose, if you give someone a task, I mean, we just went, I just went through this whole NFL concussion settlement testing process mm. oh you did the bat yeah you're going through all of these tests where you got to focus you've got to concentrate and you got all these little games and all this and that shit that you got to go through um and so you're you're focused and and they can tell how true cognitive deficiencies are because these things that they've had over years of doing these psychological tests uh they've discovered consistencies with these right. you know well you can tell if someone has alzheimer's or not by giving them these tests right um and probably <clears throat> certain tests indicate different yeah. things again and, I, and I, so I, I don't believe in that i believe you have a disease so you don't believe that's valid testing to determine uh, kind of cognitive degeneration? Is this BAP shit? No, because it's all just based on this simple scoring method of whether or not you have Alzheimer's. And that's scored on basically an 85-year-old person that's pissing his pants. You know, they haven't accounted for young people's Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's what we have. 
You know. Yeah, and just to clarify, he's talking about the concussion settlement that was, I don't know, three or four years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's a big section of players who are being asked to take these baseline tests, these BAP tests, to determine if you want money later, you got to prove that you're cognitively impaired. And then they mm -hmm. determine based on some fucking abacus and sliding scale. And then they will award you money or they won't. But I don't know. They haven't awarded much money. Uh, right? I got denied wow. because my I got oh diagnosed. My God. I got diagnosed with stage two. <gasps> <clears throat> progressive dementia which scared the shit out of me Jeez. and and so how do i go into a psychologist's office who's getting paid a ton of money and i, I must be the most i'm the best actor in the world because i apparently right. convinced some doctor that's gone to school for however fucking knows how many years and then has been a doctor for however long and got all these credentials and everything else that I'm 43 years old. You're going to give a 43-year-old person a di diagnosis of stage two. You, they could have gave me stage one. They could have just said, ah, oh, you got some cognitive impairment, which is what happened on the last doctor I went to see that didn't believe in CTE, didn't believe in any of this other shit because I got denied because this lady saw too many patients the day I went. That's what they told me. What? Yeah. What? So I'm on appeal now, right? Now, and they're on appeal with everybody because they don't believe it. Right. right, because these BAP tests are geared towards supposed to be eighty-five-year-old people that have full-blown Alzheimer's, pissing their pants, and uh, they've had guys that have gone in and you know, done that actually, and they, you know, they're making, they're just kind of overdoing it a bit, and they don't need to. They need to establish. CTE. That's what the settlement was for. But they're basing this off of Alzheimer's uh, disease. But isn't CTE excluded on the, in that settlement? Like there's something in the CTE fine print where if you're discovered to have CTE, your, your spouse doesn't get anything like after you're dead, you know? Yeah. They don't award shit for CTE. It's all yeah, like... It's on, and it's post-mortem. They say that you can only see it. Yeah. It's all when, this BAP, like, like BAP... Uh, yeah whatever they're doing with the stages of Alzheimer's or dem dementia. It's like a 1, 1. 1.5, 2.5, yeah. you know. And guys are getting these diagnoses. Multi I mean, almost everybody that's been testing is getting a stage one diagnosis. Almost everybody. Because it's just accounts for general cognitive disablement, you know. Uh, then you go into stage two and then Alzheimer's. But you only get paid for stage two, right? Are you supposed to no, get No, you get paid for, for one, two, and then stage, uh, and then it goes Alzheimer's, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. or these other diseases, ALS. Um, and I've had friends that they've gotten the same diagnosis I have, you know. Mm. I mean, all these guys are getting the diagnosis. You guys will go do the testing, and you guys will see. I don't even know if you guys can. can. I don't know what the, I can, the he, date they cut it off. You're excluded from that one, I think. Yeah, because you, you, you just retired. Yeah, so yeah. You were you'll be on a um, new one. It'll get. You'll, yeah, you'll get the chance. Yeah, but no. Uh, again, back to the Merrill Hodge thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go find a job that helps you for sure. Yeah, who doesn't that help? <laughs> get up in the morning and have a fucking purpose. Of course that helps. Well, I guess like from uh, from let's say a one concussion that you get. Let's say you're having some concussion problems. Yeah. What in your way is the best way a concussion can be healed? Cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way. And that's it? That's all you have to worry it's about? It's the only thing that's possible as a possibility to heal a concussion. Uh, otherwise, you're going to deal with the repercussions of a concussion. And that is that you develop the tau protein in your brain that's going to start accelerating right. and build and grow. So why does the cannabis work? Uh, again, this, we have a cannabinoid system, as we discover, and that is the number one regulatory system in the human body, as we discover, that we're not talking about. And the science behind that speaks to that this has the ability to stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease, which stops the progression of tau protein. And so if you can get down to the kids, you could potentially prevent CTE right. from happening. You could recover these young developing brains in youth football. I don't know why you'd want to beat the shit out of them at the same time just to prove a fucking point. Right. You know, when you, you've got Pylon 7-on-7, seven seven, you've got all these other great groups that are out there. Ricky's a part of another bunch of guys that are starting a league that's more centered around oh, really? skill. Cool. Um, you know, we don't need to do all this hitting now. Yeah. We can hold off the hitting because we need to learn how to play the game of football. There's a lot more to it than just hitting somebody, as yeah. you guys know. Yeah. Yeah. And I coached a flag football team of – nine and 10 year olds this last year. And I controlled the crowd. Everybody stopped watching because I got these kids to learn one fucking play. Literally one. I had four, <laughs> uh, four eligible receivers and a quarterback. 
And uh, I ran one play the whole season, and I had probably a thousand yards passing. These kids were throwing deep balls. They're throwing <laughs> crossing routes. They're throwing because I allowed so these works. kids to focus on a skill. Yeah. If I put a helmet and pads on these kids out there, and they can't even turn around and look, and yeah. then they're going to get in these collisions and yeah. potentially concussions. Like, what am I doing? You yeah. Know? I, my 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 argument against youth football is why I didn't play till I was late in high school. Yeah. Um. You know I. There's no point to the the contact part of this, mm -hmm. but if we implement cannabis, we can resolve these issues. We don't have to have youth uh, deaths in football. So, would you? What would be your kind of process in giving them CBD? Well, CBD is you know non psychoactive. Uh, we should be allowed full spectrum. High school athletes, youth athletes, they don't get tested, so right. they could use full spectrum. But even a CBD on its base level of a pure extract, no THC, is uh, scientifically showing that it has the ability to be a neuroprotectant, a neural recovery. All of these uh, you know uh, capabilities that cannabis has are found even in just you know CBD alone. So kids, that's why I, mean, I created that, that CBD line, it's THC free. You know, everybody's like, oh, broad spectrum. You can put a t level of THC in, but these kids, mm. we can't sell that, okay? And what we can sell is that this is going to help your kids save your brain. And we've had Pylon 7 on 7 jump on board, allow us to come uh, talk to their kids. We were just in Atlanta uh, with some of our folks at their uh, national championship game. And they, um, you know, allowed us to pass, put up a tent and pass out information to parents. Um, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's great. You dude. know, that's the only way to do it. Is so to, it's wor so it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. It's education yeah. again. Yeah. You know, exposing the science. I, I'm not here to tell you my story. I don't need you to believe me. Nobody needs you guys to believe you. Uh, there's science yeah. there that, that that speaks to this. No doubt, All dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> fuck Merrill Hodge. <laughs> <laughs> and when I see his ass, it's yeah. his ass. Good man. No, nah, serious. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's, it's real ignorant shit he's spewing. It's man. offensive. It, yeah, it is. You know, I mean, there, there. I've had tweets from fam pe people who've lost loved ones. They're like, yeah. oh, "Fuck this guy, man. He's yeah. my brother died of this shit, and you know, my son, this, that, the other. He's just hurting a lot of people. Yeah, for yeah. what? What's the purpose? What's the point? Why? Because he loves football, man. Yeah. Well, I love football too, and I'm doing a damn good job to help save it. Yeah. And we could all, and so are you guys, and we could all use his help. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? and that and the problem is, is that when you get these morons out here with these big mouths because they got a league job right after they're yeah, done playing and gifted into these TV gigs because everybody else sexually harassed somebody, uh, <laughs> you know. It, honestly, that's yeah. what's going on here. Merrill Hodge should be out, just like Kirk Herb Street. You know, get the fuck out, man. You're you're old news. Mm -hmm. But yeah. every you know, he, he's got a lot of uh, you know things that uh, he needs to answer to his community for with this book. Because mm -hmm. he's offended a lot of people, he, he, um, we'll see him. I'm sure he'll be gloating around uh, at these, you know, events coming up here at the Super Bowl, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, he can find you know co-conspirators online, like you know, a couple hundred people who will like his shit and fucking make him feel like, oh, I'm really doing something good here. You know, yeah, I got some people who really feel what I'm doing. Yeah, man, it's he does a hell pathetic. of a necktie. I'll tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a fucking cartoon like a clip character. On. It's so insane. perfect, right? Doesn't it look like a clip on. You look like such a dickhead. Yeah, his his knot is like. Like a, yeah. a triple Windsor. Yeah. The yeah. triple, at least. <laughs> the trip. Yeah. Those, those clip ons are like, had this huge thing so yeah. they could go underneath the, the yeah. collar, right? It's like, who wears that? <laughs> man. Fuck, man. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's brainwashed. <laughs> I mean, it's just the irony of it, right? Yeah. Brainwashed. Yeah. Like, bro. Yeah. You're brainwashed. Yeah. The NFL's brainwashed. Yeah. Uh, your d NFL doctors your, have been brainwashed. Yeah. Um, you know, we're lucky we've got the guys in there now that they've got some young blood in the medical field and the NFL. Yeah, know? man. It's exciting, man. Yeah. I think that it's moving in the right direction. It, it is. is. And the players are probably com becoming more informed. You know, it's oh, yeah. it's hard for them to ignore. They see it online. I'm sure they follow the stuff we're doing and talking about. Yeah. So oh, yeah. there's some educated guys in each locker room who, are, who hopefully are spreading the gospel to the other guys and letting them know, you know, yeah. they're trying are. to keep those pills out of their hands. Yep. Because those teams, to me, are wasting fucking money on those pills. Why yeah. do you want your guys all fucking gacked out on fucking Vicodin? Um, I, my personal belief and theory on it is that they have very close relationships with these pharmaceutical companies mm. and that the NFL has been the testing ground for the potency of these pharmaceuticals mm. and what <laughs> capabilities. I mean, Adrian Peterson comes back from an injury he should never have come back from in record time to have an all-pro season. 
What's he using? Right. That's what the people want to know. <laughs> yeah. You know? What yeah, if it's no cannabis? Doubt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I doubt that. But, you know, again, <laughs> athletes are the ones that people the look pigs. to. Yeah, how, how does that yeah. happen? Yeah. How does this guy come back from that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Cortisone. Okay. That's what I got to go get. Oh, yeah. My shit's hurting right now. What do I need to go get? I need to get a scope on my knee. That's yeah. what I need because that's what uh, Evan Britton had. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Nate Jackson had a scope on his knee. And well, that's what I need to get because my knee hurts. Right. Yeah. Uh, what's he taking for that pain, Doc? Well, he, well they're likely giving him Vicodin. They're likely yeah. giving him Naproxen. They're yeah. likely yeah. giving him these sleep aids. The Toradol got yeah. big yeah. In, in the, uh, you know, huge in the regular community because it got big in the NFL. Huge. The T train. Yeah, and the Celebrex and all that shit. Dude, we had pills that I had bottles of that got yanked off the market <laughs> yeah. out the shelves. Vioxx, because they're is killing that what people. it was? Vioxx was one of them. Killing yeah. people. You yeah, know, yeah, I had bottles crazy. of that shit. I was taking that every day. That's insane. Uh huh. Yeah, they're like, the football players are like the fucking test, like guinea pigs, man. Yeah. With all you these medicines are. and the brain <laughs> trauma and shit. And that's why, they're, that's why we're interesting uh, test subjects to study us. And that's why these CBD studies need to happen yeah. with, with football players so we can actually get some data and some science behind it. 100%. No 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 and, and then the floodgates will open. Man. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's all it's been waiting on. Yeah. I don't know why they haven't implemented testing on CBD. Yeah. You know, a simple test during training camp alone. Yeah, no doubt. With one, one team. Right, you could, you could take just do one, one team, team one year, yeah, and, see, and just one training it. camp in a month. Yeah, you'd have data because it, well, I don't know, not in today, in the old days with two a days, you'd have that data in a month. <laughs> yeah, today yeah, they don't do shit, do they? They I mean, don't. They're, they're just, they don't. They don't do man. nothing. Man. And so they they're just like have a timed practice. Yeah, the yeah. Coach can't start it over at the end. Coach is like nine. <laughs> yeah. on, coach is like nine on sevens. The guy's like, no, the union said you can't do that, man. We're not going out there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, they don't even have to say it anymore, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, people. They've got people just all over that situation, man. Which, you, you know, and that's how their answer is to address these injuries and, right. you know, put a tent up on the sideline. We're going to cut this. We're going to cut that. Like, no, give it cannabis. After a certain point in this game, it's an inherency. You now just have to give something to help it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Period. Yeah, you don't need to change these rules, all that. I mean, exactly. Yeah, insane. it doesn't have to be a big thing. No, because half the guys are already using it. They're already getting protection from it. They're yeah. already preventing this brain damage because they're smoking weed yeah. at home alone, and they just don't really understand the science of why they feel better mm -hmm. and why it's it's good for them. But it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, man. And more people are taking CBD now too. Yeah, you know, because of the information out there. No doubt. So, you know, I know guys personally that had bad concussions this year that I tried to reach out to personally that I got responses from. They are taking CBD. Thank you. You know, wow. some guys I sent products to. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's the, these, these younger guys. They're hip. They're hip to it. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a good... Uh, because we're dads now, you know, and our kids now are, are getting older. There's yeah. a, that millennial crew was kind of weird, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but these younger kids that are uh, younger than the millennials, I think, are very more. They're, they're going to be the the difference in all of this. Yeah. Because no they, they're they're coming up right now <laughs> under this whole thing. Yeah. And the guys that were in the front office uh, or that were getting coffee when I was playing are general managers now. Right. 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 Yeah. General yeah. manager of the Bears was. A guy, uh, I mean, he was, Pace. Yeah, yeah, Pace, man. Yeah. You know, and uh, Ryan Pace. I mean, uh, he was at the Saints. Hung out on Bourbon him. Street with that guy. You oh, know, cool. you when know, he was like, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Omar Khan in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, he was a guy at the Saints just, uh, you know, bouncing around. Meanwhile, you know, look at uh, Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell was getting, you know, he was Pete Rozelle's do boy. You know, he came in yeah. as a young guy under Pete Rozelle and, that's how that's mm. why he is where he is he wrote letters to like every single nfl team saying that he wanted to work for them yeah in addition to the league office and all that and wow he got his wish wow. so this has been his little fun. raj yeah <laughs> little, little raj little raj god he's got so much money Jeez. <laughs> fucking 44 million a year man lifetime health Guaranteed. insurance oh the lifetime health insurance that's the that's the one that hurts the most because why the fuck it's can't we get that yeah. yeah exactly that's wow. a fucking Unbelievable. joke. Saying that being a commissioner is more dangerous for your body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that just that there's a difference, you know? I mean, I sit with some of these radio guys, as you guys do too, and you, and they try to criticize, you know, like, bro, you have better benefits sitting in a chair <laughs> talking in a microphone. If you fell <laughs> off your chair right now and you said, you just said, I, I don't feel like coming back to work. Yeah. You got medical for life. You got a lawsuit. You got everything else. We had no recourse whatsoever. These yeah. guys... 
I mean, there's players that have tried to suit over severe malpractice against NFL doctors for just trying to rush you back out there on the field. And you've got staph infection, and they knew it, you know, uh, to all these other things. And now you can't play football no more. No recourse. You can't sue to the collective bargaining agreement a member of the club. See you later. Yeah. Well. Peace. <laughs> you're out. But you're living the dream, man. Yeah, I am, man. I, I am living the dream. No, you know? I, meant, I, I mean, that's, like... and that's what we fight for, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, it was, you know, that's what they tell you, that you're living the dream. That's yeah. what we believe. And so that's why you never stand up for yourself. We were. Yeah. And that's why we did it. Yeah. And they knew that they could push that button. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they yeah. knew that that's the button they could push. I had that button pushed on me so many times, you know. I, I even had, but I, they knew I didn't need it, you know. They knew I'd still go. I was in college and I had ripping IVs out of my arms at halftime, you know, when they're like, no, we're not done with this. Fuck it. Yeah. I got to go. The game's starting. So yeah. what is it about football that, f- that causes us to do that? To, it's the greatest to game aside- in the world. <laughs> it's the greatest game ever. Yeah. You know, it still is. If we could be as healthy as we were, you know, even a fraction of that. You'd go back. I'd go back. Everybody would go back. There is no world like that. There's no, the real world sucks. There's no comparison in the <laughs> yeah. real world. I'll to, agree with that. Yeah, to yeah. running out of a, a tunnel, you know, in front of eighty, ninety thousand people uh-huh. screaming, you know, yeah. I, I, that's insane. But just the sport itself, even in just a park, you know, yeah. you see these guys with tackle football leagues. Oh yeah, it's grown crazy. men our age <laughs> that are out in, in the park now to playing tackle football wow. with no pads. <laughs> really blasting people. There's a whole league on tackle For football. Sure. For guys our age, Damn, that's out dude. there, no pads, are, no pads. Wow. That's their point. Wow. And actually, if you watch it, it's uh, uh, pretty funny. Their heads never get hit. Oh wow! Yeah, rugby, Crazy. rugby style. They, you know, they know if I hit my head, I'm getting fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They keep their head out. Interesting. Yeah. So, so you think if you took if we took the helmets and pads away from the kids and stuff, they wouldn't hit heads or anything? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. one of Merrill Hodges' uh, arguments that like it's actually more dangerous if you take the helmets and pads off. Because yeah. they're knocking heads into each other. And oh, they're gonna, and that'll be the those will be the the on field deaths that mm-hmm. happen in soccer. Right, happen when those head collisions. Yeah. Boom, yeah. guy Boom. falls dead. Yeah, now it's on video. You can watch that shit on YouTube. Wow, uh, European guys that have it's died just from the headers and collisions wow. without helmets on. Wow. So they're just taking away the death factor because that's what happened in nineteen whatever with Theodore Roosevelt that they talk about. Mm-hmm. And Theodore Roosevelt, president at the time said he was going to ban football in America. Right. He's going to get rid of it because 19 or something like that, college kids died yeah, one in one season. Yeah, And that's just because they had the little leather helmets, you know, and there was no protection at all or anything like that. And they, and they didn't were just have, going... And they didn't have the downfield passing game, yeah. and so it was all just... Yep. <laughs> Just wedges, yeah. Yeah. three it's yards crazy. in a cloud of blood. Yeah, what are we doing, guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, we're humans, man. It's fun. Yeah, I've done a lot of other crazy things, man. I uh, I've surfed massive waves the size of this building, you know, and been held at the bottom of the ocean, going, I don't know if I'm going to live or die, but wow, wow. I'm, I know right now <laughs> I'm living. Yeah, right now I've never experienced this, and very many. People have ever experienced standing at the bottom of the ocean because the amount of water holding you down right. won't Fuck, let, let yeah. you swim to the top. Yeah. And you can literally stand in there going, wow, I'm very insignificant yeah. in, the, in the universe. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Surfing will do that. So wh- whatever it is, man, go for it. Go hard. You know, At the end of the day, we have something that God gave us that can resolve this brain injury, can resolve all these other injuries. If it's your time, it's your time. You know? uh, but we don't have to suffer through yeah. all this there's yeah. an answer in cannabis to all these things and it's going to be discovered period that cannabis will allow you to recover from injuries without surgeries will allow you to re- not have to have cte anymore exist because you can get it down to the youth level i got my kids on it uh for the last three years now that we've discovered cbd our kids are on it they're the healthiest kids at their school um unbelievably smart articulate they're 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 just progressing fast uh, as anybody or better and the doctors refuse to even give them the flu shot they refuse to give them the flu shot they said they're the healthiest kids we've ever seen 
It's Literally. awesome, dude. And that's an endorsement right there, dude. The yeah. anecdote, you know, that you're actually dealing with it because they people say, "Well, there's no data. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give it to my kids because there's no one who's really as candid as you and as open to talking about these cutting edge ideas and actually implementing them with your own children." So, thank you for sharing that. We need more uh, people out there who are experiencing this with their kids, not just for epileptic seizures and things like that, but for actually healthy lifestyle maintenance. You know? Yeah. Um, man. Of course. Well, again, the cannabinoid system. Yeah. yeah. We've got to maintain that. Yeah. No doubt, dude. Yeah. It's ridiculous. We, we, we don't have these conversations with your doctor. Yeah. yeah. Well, they What's don't know. What's they the don't cannabinoid it? system? Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> yeah. Wait. It's, it's like, let me tell you, doc. Yeah. <laughs> the number one regulatory system in the human body. How do you not know about yeah, that? Yeah, you don't know about that? They didn't that? teach that in medical school? <laughs> How doctor? That's crazy. The number one regulatory system in the human body. How do you not teach that in, school, in a medical school? They didn't know it existed, though, right? Basically, in the uh, existent curriculum, they don't have no, it understood. They, don't, they don't believe it. They don't want to believe it. They've been told yeah. not to believe it. Just like all of our other things that we have in this country that we've been told, you know, that are uh, we come out to be false, you know? Yeah. all From racial lines to sex lines to every other thing, we've been sold a bill of goods for a long time on a lot of things, you know? Yeah, what's no good shit. for you? What's bad for you? Yeah. My wife was telling me the other day, her grandpa used to say, you got any kind of stomach problem, just drink a glass of milk. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> You know? Yeah. What the hell? It's like the last hundred years in America, the industrialization and and yeah, uh, commercialization. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of everything has created a lot of confusion as to what we're really all about. Yeah. Now, and what's going to work with our body? Yeah. But the herb's been around for a lot longer. And it has. No you know? doubt. Kyle, we want to thank you, man. Thank yeah, you, guys. Thank Always you for dropping you. in, dude. Yeah, well, that was an unexpected <laughs> drop in, dude. I know. Sorry, yeah. I hogged your mic up. It was really awesome. I mean, this is a holiday special That's right, right here. That's right. <laughs> awesome, Merry man. Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. Uh, Kwanzaa. Yeah. Happy New Year to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever you celebrate out there. That's right. Whatever you celebrate. That's right. We love you. Thanks for listening. You know where to find us. CavemanPoetSociety.com. We'll find all our episodes, uh, Nate's books, our social medias. It's Instagram at Caveman Poet Society, on Twitter at Caveman Poet Pod. Um, and that's about it, guys. We're also on the Dash Radio app. Oh, we are on the Dash Radio app at, on the Purple Haze channel. You can find our show. That's available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, all the Spotify platforms. You can also find Caveman Poet Society by itself on everything, all those platforms as well. Thank you guys as always for listening. Continue to meditate, eat right, do your thing. We love you. Really good job. Everybody did a really good job on the pod, on the pod, on the pod. Kyle, you did a really good job on the pod. Thanks. Yeah, you did. Evan Yo. did a really good job on the pod. Thank you. Thank you. Nate, yeah, did a really good job on the pod. It's best. Jay did a really good job on the pod. On the pod, on the pod. Everybody did a really good job. Everybody did a really good job. Everybody did a really good job. Everybody did a really good job on the pod. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Fuck Meryl Hodge. Peace!